Hey everyone, Roy Shepard here. Climbing a tree to escape a bear attack or jumping into a body of water to escape a swarm of bees are only two of the popular survival myths that just might kill you. Growing up, we've heard a lot of uh, survival tips from uh, rubbing your hands when it's really cold or sucking the venom out of a snake bite. And some of the myths we even seen on popular TV shows, like in France, we saw them uh, pee on a uh, uh, burn from a jellyfish. Some of these myths are simply wrong, some of them ineffective, and others are simply dangerous. Here we're gonna talk about five popular survival myths that just might kill you. Climbing a tree to escape a bear attack is one of the famous popular um, survival myths. And bears can climb trees faster than us. They can run faster than us. They are extremely territorial. And if we enter the territory of a bear or even worse, a mother bear protecting her cubs, it's going to be a massacre. Bears would run after you, climb after you, and if you try to play dead, they would eviscerate you uh, just to make sure that you're dead. So what can we do? If we know that we're gonna enter bear territory, we need to equip ourselves with bear spray. Bear spray comes in pressurized cans and can uh, be shot to about 30 feet, that's about 10 meters, and it contains contains tear gas and other ingredients that if you spray it to the, um, to the sensitive areas on the bear's face, like eyes and mouth, it will cause them such discomfort and blind them that they would simply forget about you and, uh, and walk away. If you don't have bear spray for any reason, then find a long pole and long sturdy stick and uh, uh, wrap your uh, hunting knife on the end with some paracord to create a spear. Um, then if a bear attacks you, you need to uh, wave and slash at their face area in their sensitive areas of the face, nose, lips, eyes. Once you do that, it would uh, irritate and hurt them enough that it would just leave you alone. What you do need to watch out is from their claws. They sharpen their claws regularly and they have pretty big and sharp claws. A simple, you know, light touch from a bear, you know, can be a fatal wound. The best thing is to be aware of your environment. Bears regularly sharpen their claws, so you'll see bark, uh, scratched bark on the trees. They uh, sit down and uh, smack fish out of uh, streams, so you can see bear imprints and uh, fish skeletons around. If you see that, you'd know that you're in bear territory and you need to get as far away from there as possible, as quickly as possible. Keep in mind that small firearms, like most pistols, small caliber pistols, and uh, even uh, 12 gauge pellet shotguns are only going to irritate the bears. So it's, it's no use to use them. The next popular myth is jump into a body of water to escape a swarm of bees. Now, bees, are very different than us humans. Their eyesight is extremely, extremely limited. They see uh, um, very, the world very differently. And in fact, they rely mostly on motion sensory to uh, navigate this, their surrounding. This is why they have such uh, great reflexes that uh, when, when they feel the air moving around them. Now, for them, us humans don't even exist. They don't, they can't comprehend, uh, comprehend us because of our size. They only see a, a small portion of us. So if we try to run, then it would indicate danger for them and they might sting you to protect their hive or their queen. Now, if you do jump into a body of water in a survival situation, it will bring a slew of other problems like uh, destroying some of your gear, even might you might even lose some of your gear, uh, and you'd have to dry yourself yourself out when you get out of the water, 
and that would waste valuable time that you could spend uh, doing other things for survival like building a shelter or finding water and food. So what can we do? First, we can just stand still. Stand still, not move at all, and let the bees just pass you by since you're not a flower or anything interesting for them, they would eventually just move on. The second thing that we can do is light a fire. They are extremely, extremely sensitive to the smoke and to the, uh, um, to the heat of the fire. So, um, and, and that is because they, their breathing uh, um, is a lot different than what we think. They don't breathe through their mouth, but through small holes, small pores in their uh, abdomen called uh, spiracles. And, and uh, since they're so tiny, smoke will basically suffocate them almost immediately. So lighting a fire, will, the smoke will, will run them away almost uh, immediately. The next popular belief is if you're bitten by a snake, you need to suck the venom out and uh, spit it out. Now, this is a uh, quite a double-edged sword so, since uh, usually in our mouth, um, mouth space, our tongue and mouth space, we have micro tears uh, that will bring the venom uh, uh, more through, the, uh, through our bloodstream. So it's counter effective. So what can we do? First, we need to determine that the, uh, the snake bite is actually venomous. And you can see that because as soon, uh, very, very shortly after the bite, you'll see the area around the bite getting uh, um, swollen and uh, uh, turning purple. And that will follow by uh, dizziness, uh, headaches and dryness in your mouth. Now, if it is poisonous, you have to relax and lower your blood pressure. Um, you need to lie down. Lying down is a fantastic way to lower your blood pressure, but if that's not possible, make sure that the bitten area is lower than your heart because we want to keep the venom out of your heart, out of your heart which will circulate it, uh, the venom throughout your entire body. You have to find the snake. You have to capture it using a uh, Y-shaped uh, um, long stick preferably kill it or worst case you can take a picture of the snake and then go to a medical facility as soon as possible and give them the uh, snake type show them the snake so the doctors can find the uh, the proper anti-venom to uh, um, to inject you with now you have to remember that most venom take a long while to, uh, to become fatal, some of them even 9 to 10 hours. The next popular survival myth is a pretty common one. We see it almost everywhere. Uh, in case it's cold, rub your hands together for warmth. Now, this, in case your core temperature lowers or uh, you, even if you enter a hypothermic state, will do absolutely nothing for your temperature. It, will, it might feel good, but that's about it. So what should we do? If we are in a cold environment and we are also wet, we need to get rid of the wet clothes as soon as possible. Yes, it's better to walk naked in the snow rather than having wet clothes on us because they freeze and they will lower the core temperature even faster. Light a fire and get your clothes near the fire to dry them out. At the same time, try to rub your chest and your central core area to warm the blood inside. This will go through the heart and the warm blood will go throughout the entire body to warm it up. So the hands will rub the, 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 the chest and central areas and the rest of the body will take care of itself. If you're not alone and you have somebody with you, a fantastic way to uh, get warm is enter a sleeping bag together. Um, you have to undress down to your underwear and stay uh, and keep your bodies close to warm each other up. The next popular survival myth is if you're lacking water and uh, there is snow around, why not eat some snow? To, uh, to hydrate. We see that all the time and even uh, as, uh, since we were small kids, we, we like to eat snow as if it's ice cream. The thing is that in the survival situation, eating snow it will drop down your core temperature. And since for snow to exist, it has to be 
uh, below zero or below 32 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, then eating snow, lowering your core temperature might, um, might put you into a hyperthermic state and that might be fatal. So what we can do is fairly simple. Get the snow into some sort of pan over a fire and just melt it down, then drink it. If you're on the move and you need to drink something quickly, you can place the snow in a waterproof uh, container and place that inside of your jacket. The snow will eventually melt fairly quickly and you can drink it when it gets closer to your body's temperature. Only when you pick up snow, make sure it's, a, it's clean. To sum up, growing up we've heard so many survival myths that some of them are simply wrong while others might be dangerous. It's really important to learn the true survival techniques so when we happen on a, situa in a survival situation, we'll, we'll stay calm and know exactly what to do and not waste precious time which is basically our greatest enemy in a, in, a, in a survival situation. Have you ever heard of survival myths that are simply wrong and just might kill you? Please share your thoughts with us. I love getting feedback from you and I read each and every one of your messages. If you liked this video and found it useful, please like, subscribe and share this video. Help us spread the word. We've had so much fun doing this post that we decided to continue and do another five popular survival myths that just might kill you. From uh, finding water as, as soon as you're stranded in a desert to drinking your own pee in case there is no other source of water. I can't wait to share all this with you. So until then, stay safe. If you found this, uh, um, blah, blah.